Hello, Dion here with Viking Roof Spec. Today in the latest of our technical series, I'm gonna to talk to you about substrates. This is an area of a lot of interest for specifiers looking for alternatives to your typical plywood and concrete. I'm gonna cover off a few options here, as you can see. Now my aim is to keep this video brief and informative. So I'm not gonna try and drill down to too much detail. If you need proper detail as far as information, full information on substrate, uh, installation then you can get our substrate checklist uh, download them from our website along with their details now e2as1 talks about plywood and concrete as we know e2as1 says that plywood is to be 17 millimeter installed onto support centers at 400 millimeter which is quite conservative now you might not be aware but viking respect can accept as an alternative solution plywood supported and wider supports uh, wider apart and uh, according to Carl Harvey's specification guide table 15c. Table 15c you'll find in that catalogue there it's on page 25 I do know it quite well. It says here for example I'm pointing out that 19 millimeter plywood could be used if you're having your support centers set at 600. So this is a reasonably um, common request from specifiers for us and, and that's fine. It is an alternative solution. Another option, apart from plywood, is strand siking. Strand siking like plywood is a panel. It's made by Duke and Ishu and Kaitara and sold by Laminex here in New Zealand. It is brands and praised and codemarked as a substrate for membrane roofing. It is not to be used for decks. Um, like plywood, it's really important to keep it dry, uh, to keep the weathering off it. Um, the way that this particular board is made up, uh, unlike plywood, which has full sheets of plywood veneer or pine veneer pressed together, this board is made of la large strands of pine, which are each individually treated and then pressed together to make a panel. Some advantage of this board is that it's multi-directional, meaning unlike plywood, this board can be laid in the same direction as the main support. It does need the supports though laid at 400 centres, so it's code marked for 400 centres on those. It can be laid upside down, so there are two good faces, so it can be used either way. And if the board is cut, it doesn't need to be treated. Those are perhaps advantages for a builder, I understand. Uh, another advantage of this board, because it has two good faces, uh, and it doesn't tend to face check or deteriorate so much under the uh, weathering that you might get with a, a pine plywood, for example. So that's strand sarking. Concrete is used in perhaps 10% of projects that we see. Uh, not much to tell about concrete, you'll use it for your various reasons. Falls are sometimes created using screeds and floor leveling compounds towards outlets. The things to mention here are about um, green concrete when it's new. We typically can't, we can't lay membrane onto concrete that's less than 28 days old. So it needs to be a minimum of 28 days old. And will sometimes need to be treated for our single ply membranes, we would put over two coats of our Viking surface sealer, which is a hydropoxy. It's designed to lock in the moisture uh, into the concrete without interfering with the adhesion of the membrane. When it comes to our torch on membranes, we would prime the concrete with our bitumen primer and then use a vented base sheet to help control any excess vapor, and we would vent that as well. Compressed fiber cement. Now this is rarely used, but it is sometimes used, and where would you use it? Perhaps we need fire resistance or fire protection from between boundaries. Um, it's actually quite an expensive board and, and reasonably difficult to install. It doesn't offer anything um, over plywood when it comes to minimizing the chance of substrate movement. Uh, it is about three times the weight, and as I mentioned, a bit more difficult to install. So the only places we typically see this would might be where you need fire protection, which you won't get with uh, 17 mil plywood. Now, here is another option. This is really, should be of interest to you. This is where you can make your bigger savings. Metal, long run metal profile. This is a system that Viking have had engineer designed and we call it warm span. What it essentially is, it's a warm roof on top of a metal deck. You might be a little bit familiar with these sort of things. The real advantages here are the savings and the structural timbers below the metal profile. So unlike plywood and the other boards we mentioned where you might have support centers at 400, even up to 600, 
This metal deck can be installed onto purlin spacings up to 3.6 metres apart under certain circumstances, but typically would be installed on the purlin set at 1.8 or 2.2 metres apart. Now, in itself, the metal deck, of course, is not a substrate for a membrane, but it is the support for our PIR warm roof panel, which I'll get into shortly. Now, again, this has been engineer tested. Uh, we've got an engineer report for you. It is for roofs only, not for use as a deck. So here we've got a PIR board, which is adhered fixed to the profiled metal. You see an image here of a pearl and spacings, which are actually quite close together. So the real advantage here is savings in your overall structural cost. It's hard to gauge exactly the savings, but I could say that the cost of insulation would um, soak up your savings in your structure, meaning that you'd have a very well insulated roof for the simple cost of a membrane roof. Now, another thing here with this particular roof system is that we've had a five tested brands. It has passed with flying colors, achieving classification group 1S. What that means is uh, that this roof system can behave as a ceiling as well as the roof on a particular structure. Perhaps it's a batch or a, um, someone's garage or perhaps it's someone's home or a commercial building that has the highest fire rating that you require for any building. This would mean that you'd see the metal profile underneath as your ceiling which I think in some cases has been quite attractive. But that is another possible cost saving option if that's what you're looking for. Now this is the PIR board that I showed you before. So the PIR board is a warm roof panel. It can be installed onto plywood or concrete, that strand sarking as I showed you before, or that metal deck. It has minimal self-supporting properties, meaning that it does need to have a supporting structure below that. It won't go from joist to joist, for example. So the 25 millimeter, we have four thicknesses available, 25, 50, 75, and 100. The 25 millimeter alone spans 75 millimeter, which was the minimum thickness you'll need to use across the metal deck. But typically we'll be using 75 or 100 millimeter insulation on top of most roofs to get the insulation values up. You'll achieve R1 per 25 millimeter. So if you use the 100 millimeter panel, you would have R4. There are some situations where perhaps a membrane roof is required, but not insulation values. That's where you could use a 25 millimeter panel on top of a metal deck for the uh, most cost effective solution for a membrane roof. If you need further information around that, Brendan has actually discussed warm roofs and within uh, our technical series there as well. Now I'll touch on this a little bit, um, EPS, expanded polystyrene. So this isn't something that Vikings supply, but we find that um, specifiers have often um, gone towards this and so builders to create extra folds within maybe an existing roof. So with the expanded polystyrene, it can be hot wire cut to create tapered folds, creating a, a shaped roof as required. The panel, this panel will be glued down over the existing substrate and membrane typically for our PIR to then be glued over the top of this, and then that then would create a substrate for a waterproofing membrane. There are some uh, insulation values within this as well. So that's just another option uh, if required. I hope um, this has been of some use to you. I've just covered off some substrate options very briefly. The detail is on our website with the substrate checklist. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us either on our 0800 number I'll give them my direct dial number here for you if you need, or reach us through the info at Viking Roof Spec. Thank you for your time.